So um, I will speak about uh, what you can read here. And before I start, what is an alternative app store? Um, we use that word alternative, uh, meaning it's not Google, it's not Apple or Amazon. A uh, short profile about the company. Uh, we help developers in production of games. Um, for the publishing part, publishing for us means outside of the app stores, as I just mentioned. And we also partner if somebody asks us on the corporate space, if somebody needs uh, advice on how to run a company or how to get venture capital, we've been doing that more on the side. But basically it's production and publishing, what we are active in. A uh, quick overview. Um, Mace already mentioned we work a lot with VA. I'll go into more detail later, but here's a rough overview of some of the games we've been doing lately in the last four or five years. You can see a lot of uh, casual games here, very much uh, the mainstream genres of uh, sports, action, match three, such kind of things. We're also distributing, maybe you know that Cut the Rope uh, in our markets. So even these people use us for their uh, distribution. And since we started so long ago, uh, back then there wasn't even Android or iOS. Uh, it started actually with J2ME, which is Java for mobiles. Some of you may have heard of it. And of course, HTML5 is something relatively new. We're looking into distributing. A uh, little bit more of history because we've been doing this so long in different roles and it helps uh, to understand wh where the markets are, which I'm going to speak about. So when we started 2001, uh, there weren't even mobile phones. There was n not really a phone where you could play a game on uh, other than black and white uh, uh, browsing. Um, so we had very early research projects, started actually as a developer studio in Austria and Poland. Um, Soon later, I mean soon later, a few years later, we had our first really big success with a 1 million uh, sold uh, freestyle motocross game that uh, brought us to the decision, let's open another studio in Vienna and let's grow the team massively, but it didn't work out, <laughs> almost went bankrupt. Uh, but before going bankrupt, some investors came along and said, yeah, we want to invest in the company and you're doing such great things. We'll help you make it bigger. So what didn't work before, didn't work then in a bigger scale with a lot of money burned, <laughs> went all the way up and down again. Um, uh, so we have seen the, the, basically the company growing from five people to 70 people and back to five, which it is, is <laughs> since uh, last year. Uh, and lots of venture capital burns so and lots of lessons learned and lots of things seen that, that work, but also more things that don't work, uh, which is maybe a separate uh, topic to look at. But basically throughout all these years, um, We've been working with a lot of different publishers and most of them, by the way, didn't manage to get the shift from the traditional telecom operator stores or console business to mobile, free to play mobile. So even, even the big guys like DHQ Wireless, a long year partner from us failed. I personally wonder how you can fail a company if you have a billion dollar revenues, but it seems it works. So yeah, uh, for us, it's uh, kind of nice to still be around after 17 years and even seeing bigger, bigger guys have, haven't made the shift. Um, so let's get right into the topic. Um, everybody thinks of mobile games, app stores when it comes to the market, like where can you sell your mobile game? It's on the app stores, uh, which of course is not wrong. It's true. Uh, however, the app stores are totally crowded, like such a shopping mall. Yeah, It's totally filled up with millions of products. You will not easily find what you're looking for unless you know what you're looking for or unless it's in your face, uh, promoted in your face through the charts or editorial picks. But that's, that's how we see the app stores, totally crowded kind of shopping malls. But there are still grocery stores out, out there, uh, which we call uh, games portals or whatever, uh, non-app stores, alternative app stores. And these are the markets that have been starting the whole industry. So 2001, 2002, there was only such kind of grocery stores. And what do I mean by that? It's usually telecom operators. So if you're from Ukraine, you might, may have a Kiev Star uh, game portal here or from Russia, MTS, Megaphone, Demophone, they have their own game portals. Then in uh, Europe, you would have Orange Group, one of the bigger players, or Vodafone. And these grocery stores or telecom operator game portals, they exist really absolutely everywhere. If you know where to look, uh, there's so many places. And usually what's interesting or interesting for developers mainly is they are very small stores. So they wouldn't have more than 1,000 to 2,000 games on their store and only few people provide the games to them. 
unlike on the App Store, which is like a totally open marketplace. Millions of developers are registered there, can register there. And that's the competitive part of it. You will not be visible if you go there. Here, it's actually only one, maybe maximum 100 providers to one, one such store, one such portal. So whenever you get a game in there, either directly or for one of the suppliers, you're usually visible. That means the people see your product, which is very rare or non-existing on the app stores. It's because it's always getting into the new category, it will get some promotions. The store owners care about your product, it's special to them, kind of. So it's totally different than the app stores are in our, our view. But it's also different in terms of which markets you have to look at. It's not, it's not the Western world. App stores are large in the Western world, the US, Western Europe maybe. Of course, in Asia, like Japan, but in the emerging markets, it's not, they're not so strong. It has to do with billing. So how does such a store look like? Nothing special. It's just a, a portal of uh, con content like games, which you can buy there or other content, videos, music. And usually it's an um, online accessible portal like browser or also, of course, a mobile portal. This, for example, is from Orange in France, which is, uh, as I said, one of the bigger players in Europe. A few more examples, a small Austrian store, I mean, not so small, 3 million users, which is almost half of the population, uh, or Telecom Italia from Italy, or recently I was in Iran. Iran is a very, very prospering market as we see it. It's uh, because the sanctions were lifted on the country recently. They're now having much more uh, contact with Western developers. They can do more business with Western companies. And it's a market of 80 million people, uh, very educated, relatively rich. And there's around 10 different game portals just in this country that we recently met, which are starting to launch their game service or are launching their game service. So it's one of the markets where you could look at, for example. Uh, the Middle East is a very interesting area in, in general. It's a very rich area and there's a lot of game stores. Uh, if you want to take pictures later, I have a full list of global stores. Just wait a moment. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, so yeah, other examples from Latin America. Here's an overview of all the stores we are working with, either directly or indirectly, for example. It's over 100 different channels. Um, and here's a list, so I'll, I'll leave that for a while. You can take pictures. You can call all these people if you want, of course. <laughs> but as you can see here, um, or if you look through the list, it's um, pretty much outside of the Western sphere. There's a m much of the business is happening, at least for us, in the emerging markets or Latin America, Eastern Europe, uh, Asia, Africa is very much uh, growing, the Middle East area, and there's very little markets actually in, in Europe or in the US because they're totally the app stores, the big app stores are dominating and the, the people have relatively quickly migrated from old phones to, to the newest iPhones, whatever iPhone there is, I don't even know, I don't even care. Um, but in other markets, yeah, where people are not so, so rich or they don't just adopt to the latest devices all the time, it's, it's like 10 years back in time or sometimes or five years or, and there is totally different to market there. Your game need to be also, if you want to market your game there, it has to be low end supported. So it needs to support low end devices, meaning uh, low resolution and, and slow, slow devices and so on. So how can you make money really in the, all these markets? Um, it's pretty much any kind of business model you can imagine that is possible. It's not like one homogeneous market. It's totally fragmented. It's just all these channels are totally different. All of them have their specialities. Some of them, they are looking for developers to work with. Some of them are having their few selected partners. They only go to work with these partners. Um, but the old model that was the, the standard model since the beginning of this industry is pay per download. So you just pay a certain amount of money and you own the uh, you own the game on this device at least. Uh, then the opera, uh, sorry, the, the manufacturers, the OEMs, they have been also very keen uh, to preload games, either um, single game games or very often a, a bundle or a package. For example, we did deals with EA where they preloaded Tetris, FIFA Soccer, and one of our no-name games. And of course, we benefited a lot from such a partnership because otherwise our game would never have found a way to a Samsung preload. But going through another big publisher, for example, enabled to, to go to such a device preload. The newest model, most interesting model that we see, and even the app stores are starting to implement it, is subscriptions. So um, basically you pay a fixed fee per day, per week, per month, whatever the, the portal will offer you, and you can 
eat everything in this buffet, meaning you can access all the games or most of the games, like two games or four games a week. Um, and it costs you nothing extra, even the data charges will not uh, affect you. So it means you pay whatever amount it is, four bucks a month, for, and basically you can use all the games in the portal. And that's of course the most fair uh, model that we see, because honestly speaking, free-to-play games are kind of a ripoff. if you're really looking at it. If you can spend hundreds of euros or dollars in a game, and still you're not done with the game, you still always need to pay more and more <laughs> to see really the game. It's People will find out at some point it's not going to work for their budgets because it's not it's not uh, sustainable. So the Netflix model, the subscription model, is what we think the most fair one. Um, or free games, of course, are also nice for the players, but not so nice for the industry. And um, bundles, I basically just mentioned, you can try to make bundle deals with those channels, either sell them more than just one game or partner with other people and so on. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Michael. Okay.